Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell. First, I hope you've enjoyed some of the interviews that I've been able to have lately. Um, I still plan on doing a lot more interviews as I can get people to come on. I think that it's fascinating seeing what people have done and what people are doing. And I'm trying to show you more about entrepreneurship or blogging or just anything because I think that people are fascinating and I think we can all learn something from everybody. Today, however, I'm going to talk about sleeping. Now, I have mentioned here and there that I sleep horribly. I am a very bad sleeper. Now, this all started back, okay, well, okay, it started in 1969. The day my dad left for Vietnam in 1969, I pretty much stopped sleeping well. Uh, I mean, that was kind of frightening. We knew what Vietnam was. I was 10 years old, and it was scary knowing that your dad was going to Vietnam. And so I had trouble getting to sleep, where I would just stay up all night long, kind of looking out of the back window, uh, you know, thinking that war was going to be coming to our shores. Now, as stupid as that may sound in today's world, back in the day, you know, this was all very scary stuff. When you're hearing about wars, you would just see certain things on TV news, which I never watched until my dad actually went to Vietnam. We used to still have things back then where we would have, um, of all things, atomic bomb drills. You know what that is? Atomic bomb drills. You're in school, and they say, the warning comes. Here comes the alarm. You hear this alarm, and you would get down on your knees and crawl under your desk. That was supposed to protect you against atomic bombs coming from Russia. This is what we did. <laughs> In retrospect, it's the silliest thing you could have ever thought of, but this is what we did. So anyway, I haven't slept well since I was 10 years old, and I'm now in my mid-50s. And it has gotten worse as I've gotten older. It got to a point where um, airways. This happens to a lot of people, by the way. Uh, when you start getting into their 30s, if you hear more about people who snore a lot or whatever, there's usually some kind of blockage. And some people don't have sleep apnea from that, but a lot do. And I have sleep apnea. And basically what happens is that during the night, quite often, I stop breathing. And what happens when you stop breathing and you're asleep is your body starts to react. Your body says, hey, hey, we need air. So your body starts moving. You'll, you may kick. You may flail your arms. You may do whatever. And usually that ends up waking you up. And when you end up waking up, then you're breathing again. And you spend more time working than you do sleeping. So a lot of times when I wake up, I'm still tired. So... We've gone with something that is supposed to be kind of a solution, and it's better, but it's not perfect. And that's basically using, well, I use a BiPAP, but we'll go with CPAP for the moment. Now, CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. And BiPAP stands for Bilevel Positive Airway Pressure. And basically what happens is that it blows air into your body throughout the night. Now, with a CPAP, it starts kind of low, and that's supposed to at least give you an opportunity to get to sleep. And then the pressure increases as the night goes on, and it once it hits its high level, it never goes back down. And that helps you know some people pretty well. It's got two issues, though. One, uh, <laughs> sometimes you wake up because the pressure is just so strong that you find yourself trying to keep up with it. It can be a little difficult. And two, CPAPs happen to be a little bit noisy. Um, and, and that's hard to block. They're noisy because once it reaches this heavy pressure, then it's fighting the mask that you have to wear. And I'm going to show you that in a little bit. So it, it can just be kind of noisy, and it's hard to get over. Now, a BiPAP is a little bit different. Because what happens is it may have a high level, but it also has a low level, and it has kind of an intermediate level. So what it does is, as you're breathing in, it's a heavier pressure, but when you breathe back out, it figures out where your breath is coming, and it lightens. So now you're not fighting all night long. Now it's more of a natural thing, and it's a lot quieter because of that. So it's a little easier for some people. Not everyone qualifies for it, though, and it turns out that I did. So first, I'm going to show you the mask that I have, and this is my mask. Let's see. How do you hold it? So there's my mask, and you see I've got the nose thing, and I've got the mouth thing. 
a lot of them today only have the nose, but the reason I got the mouth way back when is because I would open up my mouth during the night. And what would happen is my throat would get all dry <laughs> then I'd be waking up because of that. So I initially got this one here because it had the mouth thing in case I open up my mouth. The problem with that was that same thing. The throat would get all dry and whatever. Now, you know, beforehand, with just the nose things, if I opened up my mouth, it meant I wasn't taking any new air in, and that meant I, you know, slept badly. But with this thing, initially, what would happen is that I would, would open up my mouth at a certain point, and then my throat would get all sticky, and that would wake me up. So I had switched from this one to a different brand. And the reason I went with the different brand is because it had this little extra thing under here that actually encouraged you to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and I ran with that bad boy for a year. The problem was it wasn't necessarily built with the best construction in the world. That bad boy leaked. And then it was too noisy. And so pretty much for a year, I would wear earplugs to sleep. Now, that's slightly problematic because... My ears were somewhat, well, they didn't like it. And so my ears would itch all day long. And now you can't hear anything. I mean, you know, I would take the phone and I have to turn the alarm up loud so that I could hear the alarm to wake me up to go to, go to work or to go to meetings or different things like that. Um, I couldn't really hear anything. And that's not necessarily a good thing. You know, if, if the house, if there was something that happened in the house, like, you know, a water buffalo hit the house. Okay, water buffalo is not going to hit the house. But you never know, Bigfoot could show up. Okay, we're just saying that. But if something happened in the house, I'm not going to hear it. If the alarm goes off, I might hear it, but I might not. And that's not a safety thing. So you want to be able to you know, have something. At least way back in the day when I ran the fan, I, I could still hear other stuff. But, you know, it was just all this stuff. So anyway, I went back to this mask just recently. And the reason I went back to it is because by wearing that thing for a year, I have actually trained myself to keep my mouth shut during the night. <laughs> so okay, there it is. I could probably go back to the nose things, but I got to tell you the truth, I probably won't because I keep having this image, and this is just on me, of uh, the last day my dad was alive and we were in the hospital in the emergency room and he had just these things. And it mentally kind of freaks me out. So I'm just telling you that's just my reality. Anyway, let me show you this because people say you can't really sleep in this. And I'm going to show you, you know, really what it's about. Now, here's the thing. I can't really talk well in it. So if, if you can't hear me, understand me, there you go. But this is just to show you real quick. And by the way, it's not attached <laughs> because I didn't want to haul that thing out of there and bring it in here. So here we go. See? Now that's the whole thing. I don't know if you could hear any of that, but that's pretty much it. And the thing is, you see this thing rotates, and you see this cord here, or this, this tube here is flexible, and then it goes to a really big thing. And because I have a BiPAP, what it also comes with is it comes with this reservoir where you can put water in it, and I have a heated tube. So I, it matches, you know, the temperature. You can make it a little warmer if you like, which they, you know, it puts more moisture in it so your nose doesn't dry out if it's really cold temperatures or, or whatever. It has all these different controls. Now, with this thing here, I got to tell you the truth. When I sleep, I sleep a lot better because my breathing is a lot better. And I still have to say that when I sleep because I think that I've got way over 30 years of bad sleeping habits to the extent that um, I may not necessarily move as much, but I still do move some. Uh, I can tell when I've had a really bad night because I wake up and the covers are just gone. And that doesn't happen as often. But, you know, I've, I've got other issues. I've got this leg thing that happens. And so sometimes that wakes me up and I'm in pain and I have to shift to the other side. And, you know, when you have trouble sleeping, you have some oddities that you have to deal with. For instance, when I'm ready to go to sleep, I have to be totally covered up except for maybe just my face. So if my hand is outside of the cover, I got to pull it back and I have to get it under the pillow or whatever. So everything has to be under the covers. And sometimes you wake up, you're not under the covers and now you got to do it again. Hey, this is, 
doing all those weird things. So anyway, the reason I point things like this out is because one, if you stop breathing a lot during the sleep, you're not going to ever rest well. Some people are going to use something like this and automatically just start sleeping way, way better. So it's something you should at least look at. Number two, although it's not necessarily a full contributor to, you know, some people who, who die, uh, if you know anything about a former football player who went in the Hall of Fame named Reggie White, he had some issues. And one of the things that is considered as a contributing factor to his dying was that he had sleep apnea and he had trouble falling asleep as well. Oh, look, I do have my glasses. <laughs> so anyway, this thing about sleep is very important. It really is. And, you know, I say that as someone who I think the only time I've ever gotten eight hours sleep in the last few years is when I've taken a acetaminophen PM. PM, and I think I took three of those. You're not supposed to do that. Um, the most you're supposed to take is two. A lot of times I'll take ibuprofen PM because it helps to relieve the pain so that I can sleep a little better. Acetaminophen PM, uh, that makes me groggy sometimes. If I don't end up getting at least six hours full sleep, then it leaves me groggy for the rest of the day. And by the way, there's this study out there that says that 500 milligrams of acetaminophen PM is way too much. So if I'm taking two of those, obviously it's way too much. And who knows how much of that PM stuff, whatever that is, is in it. So anyway, I'm just mentioning this about sleep. A lot of young folks aren't going to necessarily think about this all that much, but truthfully, it happens to them as well. My roommate in college, when we were both 21 years old, he had this problem. And this is an issue that he's kind of always had to overcome. You know, when you have sleeping issues, it's something that contributes to weight gain. Yeah, I'm just saying. Of course, the other side happens also. If you start gaining weight for other reasons, sometimes you start to develop sleep apnea. It wasn't this just a fun video. <laughs> I did say, you know what, I'll talk about almost anything, and this one is a health thing, so I thought it was important. Anyway, I'm done. I'm Mitch Mitchell. I hope that you've learned something. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any comments, let me know. Y'all take care.